there guys, Kdane here, welcoming you back to Total War Warhammer, continuing my Imperial campaign, furthering the ambitions of Call of France and his destiny to unite the Emperor, and Empire rather, unite the Emperor, we need to uh, unite his whole body back together, all the pieces, um, unite the Empire against the threats that plague the human civilization, primarily chaos, but they haven't quite shown their face, and they still have to get through the angry bears that are Kislev, so I'm not too concerned about that just yet. Uh, I haven't played the game for a little while, so I just took some time to figure out where we are, and our station is as follows. We finally secured, I believe, all of Avernland, which gives us a opening into Sylvania from the southwest here into Templehof, which Surprisingly enough, Templehof, having maintained itself as a faction, is a little bit shocking, especially to people who have been chatting about who have played a, a Vampire Counts campaign. Apparently, they could be very easily taken out on turn two. So that there's still a potent force is quite interesting, and I'm wondering to see how the Vampire Counts are actually doing. Regardless, we have our good old treasurer, Eben Olden, uh, just licking his wounds on the border between us and Templehof. We have our new addition, Eben von Liebwitz, who um, has some nice mortars. Just hanging back to uh, Pilf, Pildorf? Pildorf? Some pseudo-German name that I can't pronounce. And of course, the Emperor himself, Karl Franz, hanging out in um, Middenland, about to take Middenheim with his good old, um, very trustworthy lackey, Castilian engineer Helmut Fuhrbach. And uh, yeah, we're at the end of turn 44 right now. We got a good chunk of cash saved up, which we're going to use to upgrade Altdorf at the beginning of the next turn. So without further ado, and certainly without any more uh, faffing about, let's end the turn. Let's see here. We got the Vampire Counts are still a force and uh, mid and land, of course. In their death throes, offering us what little gold they have to stave off the inevitable unification of the Empire. I'm sorry, Toddbringer, but this is where it ends. We shall decline your peace treaty. Uh, and of course, so... War is declared. A you guys... Rival power takes really? Up. Dwar the dwarves from Karak Hearn are declaring war on us again, even though we just signed a peace treaty. Um, you know, I, I actually don't really care they are strength rate eight so they're pretty strong but uh i guess it's because they um have grudges against us for the war that we uh fought so you know what i think uh Vissenland, rather is pretty well um secured so you know what we're just gonna not even call on our allies and we'll leave it alone it takes away some of the balance of power but in all honesty what we have Karak norn up here oh actually you know what they might Oh, attitude towards them. They might actually welcome the territory change. Let's call in... Let's call in Carrick Norn and Sterland. I mean, we kind of have to call them in. But uh, I, I feel like they're not going to do much against them anyways. So what we can do here is our own armies can sack the Dwarven Holds. And then the Carrick Norn armies can actually take and hold that territory. So... Hey, better to strengthen our allies, so let's do that. And we're joined by, of course, both Sterland and Carrick Norn. And, oh, they're thinking about what they're going to do now that they've been called into war against some of their other Dwarven brethren. Race on race stuff, man, it's not good. Brother against brother. Oh, our Lord Andreas Zintler has returned from his absence and is ready for his duty. I didn't even know that we had a... An absent general. Where are you? Did you come back in Altdorf? Let's see here. Forces. Andreas Sittler. Oh. How strange. Yeah, I don't even remember him. Well, he's ready to be um, leading an army anyways if we need him. We can hire him on without any... Um, any, I think, what? Startup cash? So, that's pretty cool. Let's upgrade Altdorf to a city-state, the current capital of the Empire and seat of the Reichland Emperor. Altdorf is a large cosmopolitan city port full of wonders and danger. 
And this provides a garrison of two mortars, two demigriff knights, three Reichsguard regiments, six great swords, six handgunners, and a steam tank. There is no possible way anybody is taking Altdorf once this upgrade goes through. And of course, we get some good gold. Income from all buildings, plus 50%, and income from all buildings in adjacent provinces, plus 25%. Pretty damn good. So we're going to upgrade that. And of course, we're also going to upgrade to a level 3 barracks. So we can upgrade, uh, have the ability to uh, pump out handgunners and great swords when we get the armory. And actually, we might just want to get the armory first. Or even go for a stables level 2. I think I want the stables level 2 for livery so we can uh, hire on Empire Knights. But that is for the next turn. Do a couple of upgrades here and here there but i'm gonna leave it and just save on to the cash for a little bit i think what other towns can be upgraded here averheim you're doing okay uh Fissenland. oh you got a free slot don't you got the gunnery school at norn gunsmith here in visenberg with a really good barracks and, and a livery of course too we need a blacksmithy can this be upgraded further? No. So we won't be able to get an armory, which locks us out of recruiting... What? Armory. Demi-Griff Knights and Halberdiers. What else needs an armory? The Great Swords also we can't hire from here, but at least we can hire the Hand Gunners. So that's not a bad thing to have. I also kind of sucks that this is built here, the gunsmith, instead of in Nuln, because we won't be able to upgrade it to give us great cannons or hellstorm batteries. I think we should maybe focus on getting Nuln up to tier 4, unlocking this slot here, and then moving the gunsmith over to there instead. Um, there's no reason really to have it in Fissenberg. Uh, these two, though, it's okay to have here, at least the barracks. We might want to move the livery over to Nuln as well. But what do we actually get from this? We could just get rid of the livery, honestly. Because while we will have a foundry to hire outriders from, like... Oh, actually, that's a... Yeah, you know what, that's fine. We'll hire outriders from here, then. Since we'll have the foundry soon enough, so we'll leave that. We'll just have to move this over to here next time. As for this slot, though... What do we want? What do we want? This, uh... You're probably gonna need to do with having a... Uh, public order boosting building here. So let's build a tap room. Get some, get these, uh... Get these engineers and gunners drunk. Because that's the best thing for them, I think. Alright, we'll leave our... Cash the way it is. We'll move Von Lieblitz back. And we do have some cash to hire on some dudes. The nation calls. Three units. Oh, what are you? What stance are you in right now? Marching stance. All right. Let's. Uh, we can't change it while we're here. So let's, what do you mean? There's not enough movement. Really? All right. Well, I should have took it out of march stance before I stopped there. That's kind of frustrating. Yes. All right. So you can't do anything. Uh, these guys are ready to engage. Evan Olden still looking his wounds. He's at 20 units right now, but we could replace a couple of them maybe with some halberdiers. Oh no, can't. Need a blacksmith. Pistoliers. Spearman. Yeah, you know what? His army's fine the way it is. Cool. Well, let's get right into the Siege of Middenheim then. I think this is going to be a pretty decent battle. Winds of Magic are pretty alright in this province right now. They're blowing, so it's like a zero. It's a the neutral stance, the middling stance. So, let's Attack. see how this battle will go. They really don't have that many troops, and we've got, what, two groups of uh, siege towers already, so that's four siege towers. We could wait another turn. And we might just, let's just wait another turn to get those um, six siege towers. To make it a little bit easier, even. Alright, let us... I think diplomacy-wise, we should be good, but let's see if Sterling actually wants to confederate. Chance of success low. Why? Who knows? Possibly because they're at war and they feel, um... A lot of times, especially with confederation in games, that if you're at war with something, especially with them involved, that they're a little bit hesitant to join confederations or, of course, join alliances. That's fine. 
Nordland still kind of doesn't like us. Greetings on behalf of the Empire. Now what brings you here with a sheathed blade? Well, my blade will stay sheathed so long as you decide that you want to play nice with us. So, let's do that. I'm just trying to like get them to... Just get them to like us. Wow, even... 1800 gold, you still have chance of success low. Alright, man, whatever. Probably just gonna have to conquer them. I don't know how that's going to affect our... Um... Oh. How that's going to affect our... Quest. Oh, I didn't want to close that. The Reichland Rune Fang, because we need to forge a defensive or military alliance with them. Uh, and I feel like we're if we conquer them, that's going to avoid the quest. We might not be able to continue the Reichland Rune Fang quest line, which I would like to have. The Reichland Rune Fang is a symbol of the Electric Count of the Province, and it gives us a good bonus. But I guess if we don't do that, we can always just go straight for Galmoraz. It'll automatically begin at rank 13, which we're pretty close to, I think. We're at 11 right now. Alright, turn 46. And I wonder if uh, Middenheim's just going to give up before we even have a chance to use those extra siege engines. Ah, uh, there's our good guys, the Carrick Norn dwarves. Their throng is already marching across our lands, ready for war. Keen to settle some grudges, perhaps, between the two. Oh, man. Manslib's orbit strains and the lands flood, causing watery devastation in its wake. Wissenberg is flooded. Uh, campaign movement range, minus 50%. Public order, minus 5. And half of all the income from the buildings has been truncated. Damn it. Uh, some Bretonian unification. Some surpluses. Some peace treaties. Where is, uh, where are you? Fizenberg, damn. Any, like, evidence of the flooding? No, I was, kinda, I was hoping to see some, like, visual evidence of it. You guys are probably pissed off, aren't you? Oh, no, not so bad. Your public order is pretty, pretty good. Alright, we got that spare cash now. What can we do with it? What can we do? Old dwarf. Ooh. Let's go for that uh, library so we can hire on Empire Knights for 5k. And then you, where are you? It is time. Ibn von Liewitz. Let's grab you and actually recruit some troops. What do we want? We have two slots open. We can hire on some actual outriders which have missile piercing, uh, or armor piercing missiles as opposed to pistoliers which uh, of course don't have any armor piercing. Similar damage, but uh, the Outriders have a longer range. We have a pretty good cavalry corps in this group. Otherwise, we do can actually hire on some just regular uh, hand gunners. But let's go with the Outriders. More cavalry is definitely a good thing, especially for the Empire. So we'll hire on two groups of those. And let us siege Middenheim. It's all over, Todd, Todd Bringer. Todger, even your fantastic mustache can't save you from the apocalypse to come. The only way that we can stand and survive, also I forgot to put the banner on one of my units, I just noticed that, is if we unite the Empire, Toddbringer, and you're standing between me and that goal. Those uh, banners are quite good if you, they provide uh, single battle buffs for certain regiments, and you have to just drag them over the regiment while you're uh, in the deployment screen. Just realized that the moment I clicked Assault, so something to watch out for when you're playing or the next time that we get into a Siege. Or any battle for that matter. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think we're going to meet much resistance on the walls here. They do have some pistol ears, which are pretty much going to be useless until we get into the fighting inside the city. If that the battle doesn't end before that. Uh, we have a superiority of missile troops in this fight, so I think that an extended skirmish might be warranted. And uh, hopefully our Celestial Wizard can call down some pretty cool lightning and uh, buffs for our units so that when we do get into the fighting, we can wrap it up real quick. Now let's gamble some more Winds of Magic. And... Ah, well, 
Hey, yeah, good. We just got like 12 extra points in our starting pool. So let's start deployment. I forgot old Carl Franz is on his uh, Pegasus now. That's pretty cool. He's going to be a much more mobile force on the battlefield. Oh, we're, we're too far down. Hey, Carl Franz. All right, so we have a reinforcing army taking stock of what they have. It's a typical corner siege. Look at that statue of Sigmar. Damn. That is pretty cool, the Colossus of Sigmar. I really like these cities. It is kind of a shame that you can't go further back into them. I know Attila had some very comprehensible sieges and that were really, really quite neat. Um, very interesting city streets and like barricades and like. I guess uh, the focus had to be shifted away as that was very taxing on people's rigs. So let's grab all of our swordsmen are already in siege towers and I appreciate that. Split them into groups of two. You as well. And that's a halberdier and a spearman. Those really aren't the units that I want in the towers, but they'll have to do. I'd rather have swordsmen, but we don't have any more anyways. Let's grab our skirmishing group, set you guys together. You two can sit in front, even though you don't have shields, so you're going to take a good bit for missile fire. I don't know if the handgunners are actually going to be able to hit targets, but you know, we'll put them back here anyways with the pistoliers. Set you guys all together. And the Reichs Guard are going to hang out in the back, just waiting for their chance to break through those gates and uh, lead a charge into the city. We're going to be focusing ourselves pretty much on this side of the wall. No need to really uh, do anything on that side. And when our reinforcements come, I'm sure that they'll have a chance to shed some blood for themselves. Alright, you guys move forward a bit. And yeah, I think we're good. Let's kick it off. Immediately, let's set those towers to a rolling. Hopefully that was all in the right order. Let's get our skirmishers up here. Spread them out a good bit. We have a surfeit of units arriving, and we're actually going to put them on the flank. You guys go here. No, you guys also. Put you guys in a group. Put you guys in a group. You can go up there too. And Carl Franz is going to get right involved. He's going to try to get in there and disrupt. Same thing with our Celestial Wizard. We're going to move him up. He has a few different spells, buffs, a um, target, a um, ground targeting spell, and then a wind blast. We lost a tower already. Let's get Carl Franz right in there. He can fly right over the walls and just start disrupting troops. Get our Celestial Wizard up. Come on, guys. What are the rest of you guys doing? You're all just hanging out. That's fine. Move you guys over. Set you behind. You did your tower break, too. Damn. All right, the first towers are falling. And the guys beside them are putting up ladders, so hopefully they don't uh, suffer too much damage. Come on, gentlemen. All right, yeah, do a little hop over. I think we just lost another tower. But our swordsmen are piling out. Oh, yeah. Alright, and there we go. Our two towers on this side took basically no damage. So, they are our flank. And call friends. Pop. Uh, we actually don't need any of those spells going right now. Let us drop a area of effect spell on those uh, spearmen to help out our spearmen. Oh, and they're running. They know it's coming. That was a good hit. Nothing too fantastic, but enough. We'll actually use the Celestial Wizard to pop a buff for those spearmen. As they're kind of uh, on the front line right now. Oh yeah, doing tons of damage. Our Halberdiers got up there. Halberdiers are not actually that great against infantry targets, so something that you have to watch out for. They're more for killing the larger targets. Alright, we're going to grab Carl Franz and we're going to pull him down to fight those Pistoliers. And actually, no, nah, we're getting him to go duel Toddbringer. 
pop some buffs for my dudes, and you guys are just taking free shots, aren't you? I need you to get up there. You guys also. Up you go. Up you go. We're taking some damage on some units. Who's taking the worst of it? Halberdiers. These swordsmen need some help. Let's grab the Celestial Wizard, and we'll drop another one of uh, the Thunderbolts right here. This should break this uh, unit of, of crossbowmen. Oosh. Yeah, there we go. Pretty much shattered now. And we'll drop a buff on these guys. Our ladders have docked on the walls. Call Friends having a hard time disengaging from the fight, but he's getting there. Alright, things are going pretty well. Come on, Call Friends. Pop another leadership buff just to help our guys stay in the fight a little bit longer. And there we go, Call Friends is coming. Oh, I'll slap into him. If we can get the assassinate on the on uh, Toddbringer pretty soon, then we can end this fight fast. The leader duels are a little bit awkward in this one, but um, no, they work. And wow, that uh, Toddbringer is taking a lot of damage. Overall, I think our troops are doing fairly good. These guys are just taking free hits right now. So let's get down there, guys. Stop taking free shots from the missiles. Uh, clean up those halberdiers. You guys are free. Kind of crush further to the side to help out those spearmen coming up the walls. You guys are in a tight spot here. Let's bring the Celestial Wizard in and try to get a good clump of them. Alright, who's on the wall? You guys are pretty much making it up. Kind of have to wait for them to muster, as uh, they don't get up the walls all at once, of course, so you can't move them too quickly. If you do, you're just going to send like a couple of guys straggling out. Uh, we are cleaning up their missile infantry down here with our swordsmen. Pretty good. And you... Did you set off that lightning bolt already? Or are you just going to go do it? So these guys really need some relief. See swordsmen get in there. Oh, you're taking way. Why are you taking shots from the pistoliers? Oh man, Carl Franz actually has taken a lot of damage here. Let's pull him out of that. These swordsmen can move further down the wall. Let's just pull Carl Franz right out. You guys go that way, you guys go this way, you guys can help out over there. You mustered enough? Yeah, alright. So you guys raid off the wall then and push towards the objective. These guys are starting to flag. Oh, uh, what can we do? Get up top. The gates are still closed to us, as I haven't taken the time to actually capture them. That is something that we should do. Actually, you guys capture that gate. You have anybody free here? Not really. All right, call friends. We got to go reinforce some some dudes. You guys are taking way too many hits. Just tuck into there. We're gonna bring in. Old Carl Franz. I feel like we missed everybody with that buff, but that's okay. Have some more of the Winds of Magic. Let's buff our Albadiers. That's a pretty good buff too, melee attack and defense. So gives us survivability and the ability to strike back. The gates on the side are open, so let's grab... Where was that group? You guys with you. And all of you guys over there. I'll make you your own group. Oh, you guys, oh, you're just taking free shots from the tower, aren't you? Jesus, we just let a whole unit get, um, picked down by that tower. Damn it. Those towers have insane range. Like, just ridiculous. Alright, we broke through here, but those halberdiers are not doing well. Grab both of you and just get the tower, or get the, the gatehouse if we can. 
You guys pretty much cleaned up. You guys, you're good. Pull you down. All right, looks like we're winning, but again, we've lost a lot of troops that were really unnecessary to lose. You're doing fine, eh? Yeah. All right. We open the gates. Let's divert these spearmen over here. Let's get those pistoliers inside. And charge down their pistoliers. Where are our guard? Those guys in here. The door is now open. Come on. Clear the way, cross crossbowmen. The Reichs Guard are coming. The cavalry have arrived. Jeez, and a lot of our swordsmen have taken great hits. Too, too, too many. We've lost a lot of good men. Alright, the guys here fighting Toddbringer have fled. Hey, and there's a victory. Looks like they've totally crumbled. Damn, we didn't get the chance to kill a lot of them. They're just all running through the walls. Well, we took the city, but not without bloodshed. Close victory. You have won the battle, but do not celebrate too much, for the gods will look ill upon you who came so near to defeat. Yeah, I have to agree that that was a bit of a... Bit of a rough battle. We lost basically half of our initial assaulting force. Uh, mostly, the Halberdiers got a good number of kills, but they also suffered a lot. The Swordsmen, of course, being the front line, suffered quite a bit. Crossman did a good bit of work, but uh, not too much. And then, of course, this is one regiment that just was in the back getting picked away that got ripped apart. Well, we gained some loot, and we gained the city, and we put an end to the uh, Middenland, um... Oh, what would we even call that? The Middenland Succession from the Empire. We don't want to subjugate it. We will just simply occupy and put an end to Middenheim. To strengthen the Empire. Ooh, we gained a camp follower. Uh, no army travels alone. Minus one one turn wound recovery time. Gain the province. Middenland's been obliterated. We also gained a messenger. Plus six movement range. That's pretty good. And a iron curse icon for Castilian engineer Helmut. Helmut Tierbach. This enchanted item made from the cannonball that killed infamous necromancer Gabriel Dumont grants the wielder advantage when facing the missile attacks of war machines. Pretty cool. So that's automatically equipped. Bring me to my men. Very nice. Let's put out a provincial edict. Let's go for the um, host fest egg just so that we can bump up this public order a bit since it's very, very low. And now we're in control of all of the midden land. Let's see here. There we are, the Empire grows. Nordland and Hawkland are pretty pissed at us. Sterland still loves us, but they refuse it is good to, see fellow to confederate. I guess next step is just subjugating Hawkland, and I don't want to subjugate Nordland, but we're going to have to if we want to unite the Empire. I don't think we're going to improve the relation with them to the point that they actually want an alliance. Let's see here. I will listen. But my time is short. Really, yeah, they really just don't care. I wonder if we can declare war on them, break some stuff, and then threaten them into an alliance. Sometimes that works. Of course, eventually we're going to have to deal with Kislev, too, since they own some of the provinces of the Empire that are rightfully ours. Well, call friends, here. you can hang out and repair your troops. Did we lose? I think we lost some regiments, or do we always had 18? Perhaps it was that we always had 18. We could use some more guys with shields. I think spearmen with shields would be useful. And of course, more swordsmen is always good. And some siege engines. Honestly, we could use a lot of different things. But recruiting siege engines, the mortars from that far away is going to cost us a pretty penny. Not something that I'm willing to spend. Now. And the Castilian engineer also needs to spend some time upgrading his troop. What do we have locally? Fine. Give you some more pistoliers. We'll give you two units of crossbows since you don't have any ranged infantry. All right, and that ends turn 46, I think. Nothing else really grabs my attention. Next up, we're gonna have to conquer the Nordlands and well, hopefully not skirmish too long with the uh, with the Kislev uh, czars, as it were since I think they're going to give us a right trouncing. 
We want the Brass Keep and we want her gig next in the Hawkland territories. After that, I'm pretty sure the rest of this is just Nord Nordland territory. Or no, no, it isn't. This is Ostland territory. We need that. You guys don't get this. You guys get the Southern Oblast, the Northern Oblast, and you guys get Troll Country. The rest of it's ours. You guys can also have that. And presumably Chaos is pushing its way through here, though. Kislev still owns it. Hmm. No threat from Chaos just yet. Which is good. I'm not keen on seeing Archaeon's glowing, many-eyed helmet coming at me through the gloom just yet. All right, that is going to be that then. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I've been Kata Hain. You've been wonderful. If you guys are keen on the video, please leave a like. If you aren't keen on the video, leave a dislike, whichever you feel you're most keen on. Uh, comment if you have anything to say and subscribe if you'd like to see more. We will be continuing with Total War for quite some time. I think I'm keen on uh, finishing up this campaign. So. I will see you guys in the next one.